So last week I uh, attended a deposition, a remote deposition that was taken by a less experienced lawyer. Notice I don't say younger. Um, and I have a lot of comments on some things that he could do to significantly improve the quality of the information he was able to get and on how to control the other side. And so based on just what I saw in this depot last week, I have three really good pieces of advice to make your depositions better. So the first piece of advice is to know when to hold them and to know when to fold them, right? Kenny Rogers, the country singer and the gambler, know when to hold them, know when to fold them, had great law and life advice. And the advice as it applies to depositions is that once you know the law, right, you know that um, form of the question objections are the only objections that need to be made. Once you know that the lawyer doesn't need to instruct their witness to only answer questions that they understand. Of course, if they didn't understand it, they wouldn't be able to answer it. They don't need to say, only answer the question based on what you know. Well, of course, if they don't know it, they can't answer the question. What that lawyer is trying to do is establish control. They're trying to run everything through the prism of themselves. And so knowing when to hold and fight Knowing when to fold on those issues is really important. So what I would recommend is you fight, you hold the first couple of times it happens. But if you just keep doing it right then and the defense digs in and don't tell me how to do my job and da 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 and you, well, that's not the law. Yes, it is. And you go on and on. Learning when to fold and then come back to it is really important. So let me give you an example, right? Because the second point is to understand that depositions are a war made up of battles, that you don't have to win every battle if you win the war. So let me give you an example. So in this particular deposition, right, um, the lawyer taking the deposition started asking some questions, and the defense lawyer interrupted and said, well, objection, um, that's uh, vague. Only answer if you know uh, what they're talking about. Objection, only answer to the extent you understand. So what I would do in that case, and what the, the young lawyer, the less experienced lawyer did, was they said, counsel, please stop, stop um, counseling or coaching the witness. I'm not coaching the witness. I can do whatever I want. And they got into this colloquy. Now, what I would do is I'm going to take my shot. Whether I convince them or not, I'm going to just keep moving on. But I know that even if I lose that initial battle, when I keep coming back and I call them out two, three times over the next 20 minutes, that they're going to give up because it's not they're not right. So, for example... I ask a question and the defense lawyer says, well, only answer to you what you know. I would say, well, counsel, you know that that's not even necessary to be said. And look, Mr. Deponent, and then I put it on them. If you don't know, you can't give me an answer. So there's no need to tell you to answer only things you know. Every question I'm going to ask you for the next five hours is about things you know. You can't tell me anything that you don't know. So counsel, you don't need to tell him because that's coaching, and that's saying, pay attention, really pay attention to this question, and we don't need that. But of course, you have every right to make form of the objection, um, form of the question objection. Don't tell, blah, 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 don't tell, blah, blah, blah. Move on. They do it again, and I call them out again. It never happens ever again. That's because I'm willing to lose and I didn't really lose it, but at least appear to have lost that battle up front because I'm winning the war. But what happened in this depot last week is the less experienced lawyer tried to fight and win that battle right up front, and it took forever, and it, it lessened the control, 
And the defense lawyer felt like they won the battle. So what do you think they did for the whole rest of the depo? They just continued. And then there's frustration. Then there's anger, et cetera. Now, so those are the two points, right? Is that you got to understand that it's a, a war that you can lose battles and that you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. The third point of how to make your depositions better is to understand that you don't have to respond to a lawyer trying to argue with you. So if there's an objection and there's an instruction and there's, you know, a coach and they're coaching, then you call them out, right? You say, counsel, that's, that's you attempting to counsel and coach the witness. That's not a form of the objection, form of the question, objection. So please stop it. I'm not stopping whatever. Now, I could respond, but what would be better is then you look at the opponent and say, I'm ready for an answer. You ignore that counsel trying to engage in quali- uh, you know, colloquy. So you do that two or three times where you call them out, you slap them down. They try to fight with you, and you just move right on, right? When they object on form of the question objections and their BS objections, right? That's vague and whatever. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm gonna, and you're gonna live and die with your question. Objection, vague. Go ahead. Counsel, I said it was vague. Do you understand my question? You're now pushing them out. You are controlling the narrative, right? But that requires you to think. That requires you to breathe. That requires you to understand that at the end, you win. You don't have to win every single case, every single battle. At the end, you win. You don't have to engage in every single argument. And if there's anything that I've found to be effective in managing all those things is silence. Objection, that's vague, lacks foundation. Counsel, I said it's vague. You went, you can go ahead. Shuts it down. I bet you're like, ooh, that's uncomfortable. What? Wait a minute, huh? But what you're conveying is you're fine with your question. You're fine with your knowledge of the law. You're fine with your ability as a lawyer. You got to do what you got to do, but get the hell out of my way while I get an answer to this question. And by the way, if you don't understand that question, and you and I've said, you know, who's your supervisor? And then after your lawyer starts objecting and saying it's vague and whatever, and you say, well, I don't know what you mean by supervisor. Well, many times that's the best cross-examination you got. So then you slow down. You're like, well, you're a supervisor. So I just want to be clear. You don't know what I mean when I say supervisor? Objection, vague, blah, blah, blah. Is that right? Very powerful. Control and understanding of where you want to go. That takes experience practice. I am happy to help anybody in this this, uh, long journey of practicing and getting better at depositions. I have literally thousands and thousands of depositions on video that I've taken that I've gotten from other people in every kind of scenario. All you got to do is reach out. My information is in the bio. You all know how to get me. Good luck.